everybody. It's your favorite gentleman. This is Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. And today you all are in for a very, 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 very special treat. I have a very dynamic powerhouse speaker coming to the stage. I know they always say last but not least. This is literally she's last, but she is not the least. Saving the special for last. This lady you won't want to miss. Stay tuned, stay with us, stay engaged as we proceed to a very powerful speaker and growing tech CEO in this business. I love technology. So here we go. everybody it's your favorite gentleman marcus norman of gentleman style podcast show and today i am bringing to the stage miss trina martin she's a technologist author speaker leadership coach and podcaster she uses her experiences to motivate audience to overcome adversity develop self-determination and discipline trina also inspires emerging leaders to pursue their wildest dreams with heart and grit. She's an accomplished IT professional and retired U.S. Naval officer with 30 years of service. Thank you for your service. She has broken barriers and made strides in her career that many said weren't possible. And today on Gentleman Style Podcast, she is going to share her story and share her experience and share her overcoming in a space that is predominantly dominated by men. So help me welcome to the stage, the incredible, the amazing, Trina Martin. Hi, Marcus. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us on Gentleman Style Podcast Show. Thank you for having me, Marcus. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have you all. One more round of applause, y'all. Miss Trina, thank you for joining us today. Diving right in. I love to get this question out of the way because it's my favorite question, but it's also the most important question. Successful people have successful habits. And so what is a successful habit? Something that you do day in and day out that really sets the tone for your day and lets you know this is going to be a great day. Well, it's going to be something that you probably don't um, wouldn't expect. But when I first get up in the morning, I pray. Um, thank God for letting me see another day. And then I do like a quick 15, 20 minute hit workout just to kind of get my brain going. And also it kind of centers me to start my day. So that's my routine. Love that. Love that. And who is someone that you admire, someone that you expect that someone because you you have an incredible mind. You could literally do anything that you set your mind to. And you've proven that in your current industries, industries, right? Because you're multi-talented, right? But why tech? Who's someone that led you into that direction? Who's someone that inspired you? Oh, you know what? So this, here's my story. So I am a child of the seventies. I grew up in Chicago. First of, you know, person in my family to go to college and grew up. I didn't have a computer like kids nowadays, you know, like I look at my children, I have two teenagers, they have cell phones, iPads, computer, mm. all of that. Mm. I was lucky to have a typewriter to type my papers. And I know people are saying typewriter, what is that? Well, Google it, you'll find out. <laughs> 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 but I have always been um, great with figuring things out and reverse engineering things. I'm the youngest of four and I have two brothers ahead of me. So my two brothers, I was kind of like their attachment growing up because where they went, my mother made them take me. So I learned a lot of things and I ended up becoming this female who knew how to fix things. And I was very inquisitive and I decided that I wanted to go into tech. So in Chicago, we have a technical high school. And at the time it was rated like number one in the city. And I applied, got accepted to that. My mind just was blown with computers and technology and things that I could do. So I ultimately went to college and got a degree in computer science and spent 20 
plus years in the IT industry, working for some major corporation, programming systems, maintaining those systems. And here we are today. How has that journey been? It could that it must have been flying colors, right? Everything was easy. Everything handed to you on a silver platter. What has that journey been like? Oh, yeah, it was it was a breeze. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was not. Um, contrary to what people think. And, and it's funny because I started that journey in the late nine, late 80s, early 90s, as far as starting my career. And I look now back and some of the same things are still going on, like being uh, women, women of color, especially being underrepresented in tech, um, being underpaid, being undervalued. Those were the things that I personally faced was, you know, being a woman of color and people thinking that I wasn't smart enough or qualified enough to be in tech, where I ended up being like the sole person who was programming and maintaining some multi-million dollar systems for some major corporations. So that lets you know how qualified I was. Um, being underpaid, several times I remember going to supervisors saying, you know, I need a raise because I'm being underpaid. I'm doing X, Y, Z and the other, and my pay is not matching. And I got every excuse in the book. Oh, well, you know what? if you just do better at your performance for next time, or if you do better here, if you do better there. And I was beginning to think, I'm like, okay, you're telling me that I need to do better, but here you have trusted me with this multi-million dollar system, which I'm the only person who maintains it. I'm the writing code, I'm maintaining it, doing call outs, getting up early in the morning, but you're telling me I need to improve my performance. And I'm thinking, well, if my performance was lacking, would you entrust me? with the system and to do the things that I'm doing. So those are some of the things that I went through and just in general, just the, the race, and I hate to say it, but the racism that um, I've encountered in that industry as well, because we all know tech is dominated by men and whether we like it or not, it's predominantly white men. And that always seemed to somehow get me either they were not happy I was there. I think they were intimidated that I was taking their job or I just got some crazy reactions from people. So no, it has not been easy, but I decided that I was there and nobody was going to make me leave. So I was going to do what I had to do. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. As a, as a CEO of your own tech company and author, speaker, encourager, and motivator, from what I hear, it sounds like you had a, a lot of obstacles that many women are facing, but not we're not talking about this, right? We're not talking about it enough. And so did you... Ha, <laughs> so hi, Miss Erica Holmes. Um, thank you for joining Gentleman Style Podcast. Um, I'm also calling her out because she is a VIP sponsor of the show. And so thank you for your sponsorship. And she has a question for you. So she trumps me. I'll let her have this one. Um, she's like, how did you overcome the discrimination? How did you overcome that? You know, it was just a lot of self-determination. I was fueled by, by, the, by the discrimination. It just made me want it to work harder and prove that I was there and I belonged there. And one of my... Um, people that I looked up to and admired growing up was Shirley Chisholm. And I know one of the things she would say is, you know, if they don't have a spot at the table for you, bring your own chair. And basically that's what I did. And I just kept improving myself, doing things and taking courses that not necessarily were paid for by my company, but things just to improve myself so that I knew when they came to me and they said, hey, we need you to do this. I was like, yep, I, I know how to do that. So those were some of the things I did to just stay on top of my game because I knew it was harder for me than the next person. Mm. I want to give you my microphone. I know you, so you can drop it. That was, I needed to hear that. And for those of you who do not um, know too much about Shirley Chisholm. Shirley Chisholm was an American politician, educator, and author. In 1968, she became the first black woman 
elected to the United States Congress. And so um, I wanted to let that sink in and I needed to share that and I needed to say that so that um, we can understand our history and where we come from and what she's referencing. We have one quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Stay with us. We'll be right, right back. So stay in and stay engaged. We love you guys. See you soon. Support for Gentleman Style Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers you precision engineering tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off free worldwide shipping with the code GENSTYLE at manscaped.com. Welcome back to the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. If you are tuning in for the first time, we have the incredible, the amazing, stunning Miss Trina Martin. This woman just shared her story, a, a very broad view of what she had to overcome and face in the tech industry and through her career as a tech CEO. And she shared that story and it was very powerful and impactful. And she shared who inspired her, Miss Shirley Chisholm, who has inspired her and led the way for not only her, but many black women in the same industry and overcoming those obstacles that we all face in our day-to-day lives. Miss Trina, I have to ask a question. You wrote a book. Can you tell us about the book? Yes, the book is called, and here it is, it's called From a Mess to Amazing, Seven Steps to Create the Life You Deserve. And basically it's half memoir, health, self-help, if you want to say that. Basically, I talk about my journey through life, some of the things that I went through and how I overcame them and how to help other people. And what inspired me to do this was probably about 10 years ago, I was going through a very dark period in my life. And even though I had accomplished so much at that time, I had just gotten back from a deployment, got a divorce, moved to Texas, had small children. So I was just going through just a plethora of things. It just seemed like my back was against the wall. One thing would come, the other. Then I was dealing with trauma from my past of having an abusive mother. So all of these things culminated and I was just feeling like a failure. I was like, I feel like a failure at a mother. as a mother. I'm feeling helpless. I'm feeling hopeless. Just things. So I went back and I started to document um, what I was going through because I wanted to share this with other women. But men have read the book as well, because sometimes we do feel that way. And we think the mistakes we've made in our past and just some of the bad decisions, we start to take that on and really feel that, okay, I've done these things and I can't come back from them. And Mm. I wrote the book because I wanted people to know that your past does not define you. Um, I, like I said, I had a past as far as growing up, that was not the greatest. I've gone through things, but I I had to realize that I'm not my circumstance and that's what I want people to know. You're not your circumstance and don't give up and give into your circumstance. So regardless of the mistakes you made or poor choices, bad decisions, you can overcome them and end up having an amazing life. We have two follow-up questions from our Erica Holmes. Um, She asks, what kind of IT do you handle? Well, Erica, right now in my business, I'm handling secure communication technology. So with um, the pandemic hitting, and we all know we see ransomware and things like this, cyber attacks that are on the rise, I want to help those small and medium-sized businesses use secure communication technology in their operations because... It's not a matter of if you get hacked, it's a matter of when. And people who are not like the big corporations like the Googles who don't have an IT department, it could either destroy you or have you down for months. And that can mean losing clients um, and just ruining your business. So I want to help those businesses before it gets to that point and teach them how to operate securely. Mm. So her, <laughs> she has a follow-up statement. 
Um, you can or can't answer if you don't want to. She asked, do you collaborate with other tech companies? I would love to. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So there you go. And the name of her book, Miss Erica, you got to tune in. You got to get it. Um, the name of the book from mess to an amazing it's on Amazon. I just spotted it. It goes on, has several different versions, Kindle, audiobook, hardcover, and paperback available now. So check it out. Check it out. Get on it. Get hot. Check out that book. Miss Trina, let me get this out the way. Miss Trina, so you 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 touched on your story, you touched on your legacy, you touched on why, the why you do it. And so, and the message that you live is powerful. Let's talk about it. Sounded like you had bad leadership. So you've experienced bad leadership um, because when you're going to that same supervisor and asking for a raise and asking for a promotion and they can't necessarily justify what to do with you, that's that encompasses, I think, almost borderline racist, but it's also bad leadership. So how has that changed and changed your trajectory as a leader yourself, leading a tech company, leading a business, author, speaker? How has that affected your leadership um, and how do you advise leaders today? You know, that is just the, that's the impetus of why I do what I do because of poor leadership. And I've, like you said, I, I'm retired military. So in both corporate and military, I have experienced poor leadership and good leadership. Um, and I try to learn from both of those. So in, in my business and in, in leading and teaching others, I try to help them do things that um, I saw as good leadership, like you know, one is, it's having compassion for your people. That's one of the top things. I know a lot of people don't have that mindset. They think, okay, this is my business. I'm the ruler. You do what I want you to do. But everyone, you know, needs compassion. So I'm going to give you an example. I work for a company and my second level boss or so my boss's boss would see me and say, hi, Trina, how you doing? How are you two boys? I don't have two boys. Mm. So the first time he did it, I said, um, I don't have two boys. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The next time he saw me, he did the same thing. <sighs> so it just became to a point where I got irritated. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to even correct him anymore because it's not that important. Because obviously it's not important to him because he keeps asking me about two boys that I don't have. And that's one of the things. It seems small. It seems minute. But that's something that's very important in leadership is for you to know your people. Now you don't need to know their intimate details. If they don't want to share, you know, you don't have to sit and, you know, chuck it up with them. But if you're going to say something like, how are you doing? How are your kids? I would prefer him to say, well, how are your kids? Instead of saying, how are your two boys? When I specifically told him I don't have two boys. So it's just that letter level of empathy and compassion, just to make your people feel like they're not just, a number or only thing you're concerned with is the bottom line. They are human beings. They go through things. And I know with COVID and things going on, people have had loved ones to die. People have lost jobs or don't know how to deal with things. You know, we've had so many things going on in our life in this past year and a half that you just showing an ounce of humanity, like asking somebody, wait, hey, how are you doing? And really taking time to listen that, hey, how are you doing? And you keep walking, you know, hey, how are you doing? <laughs> You know, and that's that to me, that shows a lot of character. So I'm, I'm big on character and integrity. And, you know, you being a vet as well, you know, that's something that's very um, pressed upon in the military. So those are some of the very key things that I, I coach people on in leadership. Mm. Humble, y'all. Did y'all hear the humble? You saw how she took that and just took it apart like a brain surgeon. She just like scalpel mm, and dissected that leadership, that poor leadership. And and that's what it is, right? A lot of the lessons, a lot of the things. Um, I'll I'll say it, right? A lot of the experiences, a lot of the leadership qualities um when I was in the military, um, not all of it was positive, but I learned from it. And all of that sculpted me into the man I am today. And so as a leader, as a leader, she's taken her experiences. She's taken the poor leadership examples that she's witnessed and she's experienced, and she has now overcome them. And she does, she moves forward and she presses forward to now inspire others. And so that is major and that is necessary in the world that we live in today. 
to not be staggered and not be baffled and not be overcome with so much hate. There's a lot of hate in the world, but there's also in, in the darkness, there's also sunshine as well. Um, Miss Erica asks, what are your thoughts about cryptocurrency? <laughs> <laughs> Very unstable. <laughs> um, like, period. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's very unstable. Um, I have a friend who asked me about that because he was thinking about buying some. And I was like, yeah, I, you know, I don't think you should invest in that because it, by it not being a fiat currency. And when I mean when I say fiat, I mean government um, owned and sanctioned, um, which our U.S. dollar in most governments have fiat currency. So whatever their government currency is, it's, it's called fiat because it's regulated and governments oversee it. Cryptocurrency is not that. So it fluctuates. So depends on who says what. And I think I was reading today, someone said something about Bitcoin, which made it soar. Um, and again, somebody may come out tomorrow and say something against it and make it drop. So it's very, it's very um, unstable. Um, I don't have any Bitcoin personally or cryptocurrency, you know, in general. So that's just my, my thoughts. Um, just something for you to think about that, how unstable it is. <laughs> I'm with you. I don't have any Bitcoin as well. <laughs> I am with you. It's too confusing. It's too, it's, it's not consistent enough, right? It's not consistent enough. And I, I, I could go on and on and on and I'm not going to, um, this is her show. This is Trina Martin. Erica, why'd you ask that question? Stop doing it. <laughs> um, but yes, she's very powerful and extremely powerful. And it, it is a very unstable currency. How does it, as a leader, as a leader yourself, as a CEO, um, what advice would you give to the young boy or the young girl or the young man um, out in the audience who is on the fence, right? They're scared, right? And uh, especially the younger, right? She's scared. It looks overwhelming. Science and technology is overwhelming. STEM is a huge field. But what would you, what advice would you give to that young girl who is on the fence about getting started in tech? I would say you can do it. I, I was you. I was the young girl who I didn't have it modeled for me. I didn't come from, like I said, I'm a child of the 70s. So I didn't grow up with computers in my home. I didn't have anybody that I saw model what I wanted to be, but you can do it. You have a place. You're smart enough. Don't let anyone tell you that, oh, well, there's a lot of math and there's a lot of this and you just can't do it. And don't look at the landscape that you may see before you, which may be all men and all men um, that don't look like you. You can do it. Know that you can do it and you deserve a place and a seat at the table. So apply yourself, do whatever it is you have to do, but do it. And that's one of my passions. Um, and it's funny because as I've gotten older, I started to think about why am I here? What is my purpose in life and about my just my journey in general? And I think being a woman who spent two decades in tech at the time that I did and being a woman of color that my mission is to help other girls of color come to tech and, and STEM and whether you're a Latino, black girl, a Native American, whatever that is, I want to be that face so that they can look and say, okay, she looks like me and she can do it. And she came from beginnings like me and it's something that I can do. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. We have one more quick commercial break, y'all. Stay tuned for this powerhouse speaker, Miss Trina Martin. Stay tuned. Stay with us. Stay engaged. We'll be right, right back. Good day, podcast listeners. This is your boy, Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I wanted to let you guys know that we will be rolling out a new feature and adding a join sponsor button next to the subscriber button here at the bottom of your screen. Once you click the button, it will display three membership levels. Gentleman Gentry, which is our entry level. Duke Duchess, which is our season level. And the Emperor and Empress, which is our most sophisticated level, which you will receive unique perks and benefits at each differing level and gain access to our community tab. We will also be sharing polls, upcoming events, and interviews, as well as receive feedback from our sponsors directly. Your support helps me find new, 
an exciting guest to bring to the stage live. Well, in order to get the higher end speakers, it requires, well, some, you guessed it, money. So thank you for tuning in to my channel. And if becoming a sponsor sounds good to you, then select the join button below and choose your desired sponsor level. Let's continue to grow and serve the future of generations of men and women to come. Love you guys. Bye. We are back and we have the incredible, the amazing powerhouse speaker, Miss Trina Martin, CEO, of tech company owner, founder, author, motivational speaker, and woman science and technology titan. <laughs> like, there's no word that has been invented yet for this powerhouse woman. And yes, Miss Erica, Trina is awesome. Very, very awesome. Miss Trina, how can we support you? How can we get behind you? How can we uplift you and further take you to the next level and, and, and get behind this movement? Because you are a movement, right? Women are dominating in industries that were typically dominated by men, right? We're now, women are now running Fortune 500 companies. Women are now in business. Women are now um, leading major corporations. And now the big push now is to dominate in, in tech, Um how can we get behind you and support you and uplift you? You know, I am like Erica asked earlier, I am always open to collaborate with other people in tech, especially women um, doing joint ventures, partnerships, whatever um, clients. But I also I'm putting together a girls of color in tech um, six week class on Saturdays that I would love to have other women in tech come on and spend an hour on one Saturday and speak to these girls. And I, I wanted to get some sponsors and um, things like that so that I can make this program really good and reach out to those girls who want to get in tech, but um, may have questions and, you know, just questions on what career path they should choose and um, what, what are the avenues, what certificates, what degrees, whatever that case may be, things that they don't normally get in other places and just to ask, ask questions and see other women who are in tech. So that's, that's my goal. And that's a dream of mine. So I'll ask the question. I'll ask the question, right? Um, I need some tea. Let's spill some of the tea. We don't have to spill all the tea, but how does a young woman um, get started in tech. Um, where is the weight carried in technology? Is it the certifications, the C++ certifications, or is it the college education? Where is the most weight and where should she start? You know, oh, goodness. I would say both. If you can do both, do both. Um, I was a programmer. So like I said, I had the degree certifications came later, depends on what your, your specialty is and what you want to do. But just be a sponge, soak up any kind of knowledge you can, um, whenever you can, um, if, whether it's a degree programs or you're getting certifications here and there, some certifications are not as expensive as others. Um, but they'll, they'll all help you, um, pick up books, go to the bookstore, pick up books, um, learn whatever that new programming language is, but you definitely want to be, know and you want to learn technology is always changing so you're always going to learn you're never going to say okay i know everything and i can stop when i was programming in, in 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 the industry i was always constantly learning i was always going to the bookstore picking up a book on a programming language finding out new ways to program something or new tools that were coming out so it's always evolving so just stay up on all the technology that's out right now. Cybersecurity is a big thing. Um, that's a good route to go, but just really stay up on what's happening and whether it means you get a subscription to a tech magazine um, while you're doing these things, all of that information can help you. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. So I've been put out of a job. So I've been fired. Um, Miss, <laughs> Miss Erica has taken the show because um, I have no idea where this is going. But obviously, you two know. Um, what cloud-based product do you recommend to small businesses? Ooh, 
you know, it, it depends uh, on what you're doing. I know now Microsoft, and it depends on if you want a whole platform. I know there's um, the Microsoft um, platform and it just left my brain cells right now, but um, you're fine. <laughs> you're fine. You know, it's, it's, Microsoft has it. Amazon has one. Google has one. I think um, Google and the Chrome and Chromebooks. I know my kids school, they were pushing that. And with the cloud based services and um, yeah, cloud computing, things like that. The whole objective is to be able to work from anywhere, have everything synced up. And it's really, it's really, um, a benefit if you're if you're a business working, especially if you're a small business and you may not have a big central location. And like I said before, an IT department. But if you have people that are working remotely and out on the road for you, it you know it just depends. And if you're talking about messaging or something that people can put on their phone apps, I have some different ones that I like to suggest to people. Um, I personally, like I said, since I decided to deal in secure communication technologies, I always try to. Um, put those out there. And one of the platforms that I really, really love as far as secure communication is Signal. And it's a messaging app. It's free, but it's encrypted. So if you are a business and you are needing to communicate with your people or whatever, and you want to communicate on the go where you're not sitting at a computer and you're sharing sensitive information and you don't want, you know, you just don't want to get out and text that or put that in email. Signal is a great application to have an app on your phone where it encrypts your conversation. So if you need to say, hey, you know, employee B, I have some information that I need you to have and you're not at your, your computer. So I'm just going to text it to you. Signal is a great way to do that. There you go, Miss Erica. I hope that answered your question because that definitely did not <laughs> answer Mike. I didn't know what <laughs> I didn't know what we was doing right there. Um, you guys have walked into a space that I have no jurisdiction in, so I'm gonna stay in my lane <laughs> and continue the show. Miss Trina, what can people do? Where's your website? Um, you said you're on Facebook. How can people connect with you that way? What's your website? And, my website uh, is trinalmartin.com and there you can if you want to book me to speak if you want me my tech consulting services or to teach train or anything like that you can go to the website you can find me there you can find my books if you want a more instant response i am big on linkedin i'm i'm usually on that checking that all the time so that's a great way to um communicate with me that's LinkedIn and her website. She's on LinkedIn. She's excited to connect and she's ready to partnership and always looking to grow. Yes. Miss Trina, this has been a powerful episode. You inspired me um, today. You inspired. I know you inspired my audience, but you definitely touched me. You definitely inspired me and motivated me to do better and to work harder in leadership and work harder to make sure that I'm always connecting to always stay supportive and always continuing to grow. I think a lot of times leadership leaders, we, we get bogged down and we're, we're over here and we're up here and we're working so hard that we forget, um, to check back in and to check the pulse of our companies and to check the pulse of our people. And so thank you for what you do and thank you for your service and thank you for inspiring me today thank you marcus for having me i love the show and love your audience it was very you know very engaging and fun so thank you for having me absolutely absolutely um and it looks like you have a new follower um on linkedin so erica and you all will connect um so thank you i want to say this to you publicly miss trina don't ever quit don't ever give up. The world is changed by you. The world is inspired by you and influenced by you every single day. And so um, on behalf of me and everyone here, I want to say this to you publicly. Don't ever quit because we need you. We need what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you, my audience, for tuning into the Gentleman Style Podcast show. I hope this message helps. I hope this inspires. And I hope this helps you take your business, take your business to the next, next level. And if you are on the fence about getting into tech, getting into STEM, 
you heard it here you heard it here live you can do it so like i end every show like i end every connection take care of your family take care of your friends and always always take care of business this is marcus norman of gentleman style podcast your favorite host and miss trina martin ceo entrepreneur author speaker and tech ceo signing off love you guys bye